All right, here we are with some amazing foods, which actually are amazing for one reason, which is they're grown on a plant, not made in a plant. Imagine right? that. Imagine that. And also, they meet one of my favorite rules of eating, which is it doesn't have a label. <laughs> what is this? It's an avocado. You don't need an ingredient list on an avocado, right? Avocados are a great source of fats, monounsaturated fats. Uh, Tana loves them. They're, they're also incredibly uh, rich in protein, and they're full of fiber. That's right. They're very satisfying. They're creamy, and you can put them in smoothies. You can do all sorts of things. I, I what wanted, do you do I want to make a side note on this. A lot of you are thinking, oh, they're fattening. Fat does not make you fat. Fat, the wrong fats make you fat, and fat with sugar makes you fat. It's the sugar that makes you fat. So the fat does not make you fat if it's healthy fat. That's right, you know, that's really important. You know, think we all are, fat makes you fat, it makes you gain weight, and it's, it's kind of a myth. In fact, we know that from all the studies that have been done, that people who eat fat doesn't translate into that's being right. fat. What we do know, though, is certain fats, like trans fats or, or, or shortening, fat. which I say is called shortening because it shortens your life, actually does cause problems with metabolism and can make you that's right. fat. So eating the wrong fats make you fat. Eating the right fats, which is nuts and seeds and avocados and olive oil and fish oils, these actually make you thin and healthy. Unless you combine your fat with sugar and salt. That's a different right. story. Now, what else we got here? We got garlic. I love garlic. Absolutely. You got you to gotta love garlic, Ooh. right? Especially with avocados. And you know, if you're really <laughs> lazy, sometimes like I am, they actually have garlic in these little chopped up, pre-chopped up garlic things, which is fantastic. Or you can crush and peel your own garlic. Now, why is garlic good? Because it makes food taste good, mm -hmm. right? And what else does it do? You know what else it does? Well, I know that it's just great for your immune system. It kills lots of icky bugs. Right, so this is like, this is like medicine. It right? absolutely it looks, is. It tastes food, good on food. It's great in salad dressings. It's great in stir fries, but it's actually healing. Absolutely. It's anti-inflammatory. It, it helps lower cholesterol. It helps to boost your immune system. It helps to thin your blood and prevent heart attacks. And it also does all sorts of other things that are incredible. And it's simply something that comes from nature that you don't have to worry it's about. It's wonderful. I always love the drugs that Unless God you're going makes on a date. Instead, of the dr instead of the drugs that man makes. So right. if you're taking drugs, make sure you take the drugs that God makes. So what do we got here? We got some amazing foods. This is another food that has no label. Yes, right? these are some of my favorites. These are great. Now, if you're hunting and foraging, you want to get to this section here. This Absolutely. is the produce section, and it's a section, actually a special part of the produce section, that has the most healing, the most powerful Without medicinal foods, the most detoxifying, anti-inflammatory foods on the market, and they are greens. Green leafy green vegetables. Green collards. There's bok choy. You might go, I never ate that stuff. I don't even know how to cook it. I, know, I remember checking out at the checkout counter in the, the grocery store, and the woman's like, what is that? I mean, then lucky you, know, you, it's an this, adventure. This is another great thing. This is kale, yes. right? Kale. Let's go with my smoothies. These are, you know, <laughs> it looks weird, but it tastes great. Make right. salad out of them, stir fries out of them. And you know what? They're full of folic acid. They're full of magnesium. They're full of B vitamins. Right. They're also full of these powerful things that are called glucosinolates, which are powerful detoxifying compounds. You know, Rick talks about detoxification and detoxing your body. Right. Well, this is a way to do it by just having more of these foods. And I right. just buy a whole bunch of this, I stick it in the fridge, lasts for about a week, and then I have it for the week and I can make a stir fry in about five minutes. I take that chopped garlic, right. I chop this up, I wash it, I throw it in a pan with a little olive oil. In five minutes, I have the most delicious greens and it doesn't take long and it's quick and easy. I'm very big into raw foods and that's why this is my favorite section because there's so many great things you can do with vegetables and fruits if you just get used to it. And if you don't like to cook, raw foods are a cinch. So, very fun. And we got more things. We got Brussels sprouts, we've got cabbage. You know, cabbage is an old staple and it's actually a, one of the broccoli family and it has great beneficial properties for detoxifying and it's Absolutely. crunchy and it fills you up. And uh, maybe give you a little gas, but that's all right. You're, that's right. You're with your and, family and friends. And the red cabbage is so pretty in your salad, so love all right. that one. Now, what else we got here? We got broccoli, we've got carrots. I mean, anything here goes. If you want to eat, you can eat as much as you want of this. You cannot worry about binging on broccoli. No. No, one, no one can get fat on broccoli. I haven't known too many vegetable addicts, so. Well, here's another great one, spinach. You know, spinach is good, and it's uh, really easy to make, and it's delicious. It takes probably about 30 seconds to cook. You don't another, overcook it. Another great one that's really good to put raw in smoothies. You don't taste it. You don't taste it with the fruit. Mm -hmm. Sounds gross, tastes great. So this is all good. And this kind of corn, you know, corn syrup, corn sugar, corn 
flour, you know, corn oil. These are things that are processed. And you know, most people don't realize that uh, you know, chicken nugget has about 38 ingredients. About 15 of them are corn. Maltodextrin, corn sugar, corn flour, corn thickeners. You know, we have so much processed corn in our diet. But this kind of corn is, is okay. You can have corn on the cob. It's delicious, crunchy, uh, and, and you should enjoy it. Red bell peppers. These are another staple in my house. We love red bell peppers. And um, one thing about red bell peppers, people think that, you know, you can't get your kids to eat vegetables. There's actually a couple reasons for that. But usually the vegetables you can't get your kids to eat are the dark green ones because they have a little bit of a bitter taste. And until they get older, they don't usually like that. Believe it or not, most other vegetables you can get your kids to eat, carrots and red bell peppers. And a lot of you haven't tried this, but you can. These are my daughter's favorite vegetable. We put almond butter on them, her favorite snack at school. The other kids all thought she was weird until she started sharing her snack. So now this is like a favorite at her elementary school. Try it, they'll like it. Yeah, what, what else has we got here? Is, oh look, we're hunting and we found something else. This root. Oh, oh this. yes, one of my other favorites. This is amazing. Now you probably go, what is this? I've never <laughs> seen this before. This is very weird. Crazy. What is this? This is ginger. This is fresh ginger. And it's incredible food. It's in powerful anti-inflammatory. You know, most of the diseases of aging and of, of chronic disease like heart disease and cancer, diabetes, obesity, they're all inflammatory diseases, and this is powerful anti-inflammatory. And Mark, isn't that good for digestion it's as well? It's great for digestion, helps nausea, helps women with pregnancy who are nauseous. And you know what you do? You peel it, you slice it, you put it in stir fries, you put it in soups. There's it another thing that I love to do with ginger, and that is make, we make a tea out of it. You just hot water, a few ginger slices, you just throw it into your tea with some lemon, and you can use just a tiny bit of honey it's delicious and it's great for your digestion and if you're getting a cold, it makes your throat feel wonderful. Mm. And here's, here's another great thing. I found one of these. What is this? Oh. This, you know, Jamie Oliver did a food show called Food Revolution and he took a group of kids in Huntington, West Virginia in a classroom and he asked them to identify vegetables and fruits and not one single kid could identify one single vegetable. He, he gave them this, they said, oh, I think that's a pear. Well, this is an <laughs> eggplant, okay? This is an eggplant, and what you do with it is, is up to you. But the way I like to make it is I slice it really thin, and then I put it on a baking sheet. I sprinkle some of that crushed garlic on it, a little bit of salt, a little bit of olive oil. I put it in the oven. 45 minutes later, it comes out. It's Ooh, you're making crispy, me hungry. delicious, crunchy, and mmm, so good. That's making me hungry. <laughs> Now, Tana, this is an amazing find here in this just regular supermarket. It's organic apples. Now, I always say don't eat anything that comes in a bag, a package, or a can, but you know, a bag of apples, that's okay. And this bag of apples- Especially if it's organic. That's right, it's organic. Now, why should you eat organic? Well, some foods have a lot of pesticides which actually cause weight gain, cause cancer, cause heart disease, and many, many other things. So we wanna stay away from toxins in our food whenever possible. Now, you can't buy everything organic, and it is a little expensive, but there are some just quick tips you should know. There's an important website. You want to go to ewg.org. That's environmentalworkinggroup.org, ewg.org. And that's an organization that documents the worst offenders in our foods. And they actually have the Dirty Dozen, which are the foods of the 12 worst contaminated foods that you can buy in the supermarket. And you want to avoid those. And then they have the ones that are low on the list. So there's the, the healthy dozen, which you can buy non-organic and be all right with. So I encourage you to go to that website and learn about whether you should buy organic or not. It's a great resource. All right. So we have come to a, actually a great section down an aisle. And I always say don't go on the aisles, but you can go down the aisles if you know what you're doing and you're careful about stepping out of the landmine. So there's a few things. Here's some amazing things we found in the aisle, which are beans. Now, Americans don't eat a lot of beans. They're kind of a little worried about beans, but they're a phenomenal source of protein. Especially of, for vegetarians. That's right, for vegetarians. They have great source of minerals, magnesium, which is something we're all deficient in. They have tons of fiber. They prevent cancer. I mean, they're just fantastic for right. you. Now, so you say, oh, I don't have time to cook beans. It takes hours and days to cook beans. Well, you can put them on at night, leave them over, few hours cooking, go while you're watching TV or doing something else and they cook. Or if you're lazy like me, you can buy canned beans, which are fantastic. And you can just open up the can, you can drain it, you can pull out olive oil, a little garlic, a little salt, vinegar, and you have a great little yummy snack that takes about all of maybe 120 seconds to put together. And, and there's just no excuse. And it's a great source of quick protein. This is the kind of things that I stock up in my pantry 
so that I have all the time. So I don't really have to worry about, oh, am I going to be in a food emergency and not have something to eat when I'm really hungry? So right. I love it. And I do understand a lot of you work and you just don't have time. And in a pinch, you know, occasionally I use canned beans. Um, just a side note. There are a lot of people with sensitivities to beans and grains, and um, if you're one of those people or if you don't know, you should find out. If you have certain health issues, this is one thing you should be tested for. I happen to be one of those people, so I can't use canned beans. And if you don't know or you are one of those people, it's important to know you probably still can eat some beans if you don't eat canned beans, if you soak them overnight and cook them properly. So that's just an important side note for those of you, as long as you don't eat high quantities of them. Yeah, and the other thing is, you know, people say, ah, oh, I eat beans, I get gas, my stomach's bothering me, but not you know what? Not if you soak them and cook them properly. Yeah, not though. if you soak them and cook them properly. And also, we're used to eating a white flour, white sugar diet with no fiber in it, so your stomach is just not used to all that fiber. Right. But you will get used to it slowly, and over time, you won't And it's really the it. flour and sugar you need to get rid of. That's so. right. So, some good things in the aisles. That's right. All right, here we are in another aisle, but actually there's some good stuff here. It's colorful, it's red, it's got a label, but let's see, there's really only tomatoes, jalapenos, onions, garlic, onions, garlic, vinegar, that's pretty good. And this is a great alternative to what? Ketchup. Ketchup, a lot of people don't realize, is very high in sugar and sodium. So you want to be very careful if you're on a low-sodium diet. Some salsas are high in sodium, so you want to watch that if you're on a low-sodium diet. You can also get salsa made fresh a lot of times in the produce section. Yeah, I Great like, alternative I like spicy ketchup. food, and there's all sorts of spicy red sauces and chili sauces. Right. And, you know, these are great because they spice up your food. You can sprinkle them on beans and grains, uh, vegetables. I mean, I just, I just love to have this in the house. And it's another staple I have just right. in case I want to have something good and quick and yummy easy. That's right. These are quick and easy things to make foods with. Okay, here we are in the frozen section. Let's see what we can find. We've got some, what? Tater, tater nuggets. nuggets. Fried tater nuggets. potatoes. Fried potatoes. Now let's see, what, what is potatoes? Okay, let's see, that's all right. Here's something we haven't talked about. Trans fats, or hydrogenated oils. Now there's two things that I want you to remember. Forget everything else, there's two things that I want you to remember. If it has hydrogenated fat on the label. If you see the word hydrogenated fat on the label, put it back on the shelf. And if it has the word high fructose corn syrup on the label, put it back. So high fructose corn syrup are hydrogenated fats. You get rid of those, you will almost immediately transform your entire diet. That's right. And I would encourage you to go in your kitchen and find everything with hydrogenated fats or high fructose corn syrup on the label in the garbage. That's right. And most of the processed foods you touch in the grocery store are going to have those things in them. We know your kids love these things. Again, these are one of those foods that if you don't like your kids, go ahead and feed them that food. That's right. You know, but there are good things in the frozen section. So what do we got here? We've got vegetables, Brussels sprouts. Yum. We've my We've got favorite. mixed fiesta blend of broccoli and carrots, beans. That's right. Wow. And you know what's so great about these is they're just plain food. Now they're frozen and actually they retain a lot of the original nutritional value, even better than stuff that's often shipped across yeah, the country. Yeah, sometimes they, they flash freeze right. these in the field, that's so right. and, yeah. they're not bad. No, they're not bad. And then you always have them in your freezer. You can never be without vegetables. And you can always kind of, in a pinch, you know, you, you heat them up in the microwave, which I'm not throwing with microwaves, but you can steam them or right. heat them up in the microwave. And you know, you get something really good, very fast, and it's really there all the time. So this is kind of your emergency stash right. in your kitchen. I'm one of those people who loves fresh food, but there are many people who can't get fresh food in the, you know, in a, in the grocery store. You live somewhere where that's not available. There's nothing wrong with frozen vegetables, no. and I much prefer them to canned. That's so. right. So there are good things in your supermarket. You just don't have right. to know where to find them and how to get them and how to avoid the dangers and find the good stuff. Okay, now we are in the meat section, and when we're choosing chicken. Um, or poultry, you always want to make sure to try to choose free range, hormone free, antibiotic free poultry when possible. We know that's not always possible, but it's really important on this one because you are essentially eating the hormones and the omega-6 fatty acids that the animal ate otherwise. You don't want to be eating chicken that's full of junk and right. antibiotics and even they use arsenic on the feed and you That's get arsenic right. in your body. So you really want to try to get free range organic. 
The one thing I would say about chicken is that it's one of those things you can buy and put in your freezer and have all the time. I take chicken breasts that are skinless, boneless chicken breasts. I buy them in the, in the supermarket. I have them packed individually and I put them in the, in the freezer. And then whenever I need to, I can just defrost them and I can stick them in a pan or cook them, chop them up quickly, put them in a stir fry, and in five minutes I have dinner. So really, if you have these tricks and you learn these ways of, sort of right. navigating and navigating both in the supermarket and the kitchen, you can have really simple, delicious, quick, easy meals in a matter of minutes. And you can buy them in bulk and get them at discounted prices. There's lots of ways to do that. So That's right. So let's see. As another source of protein, what we can eat, it's actually a great source of protein, and that's fish. That's my favorite. Fish is great. It's, it's very good because it's, it's got good fats in it. It's got omega-3, which are really essential. And, you know, we all need an oil change. We're all eating the wrong fats. And there, there are certain safe fishes to eat. You know, you want us away from tuna and from swordfish, which are full of mercury. And you want to sit with fish that basically fits in your pan. Think about this. If the fish with the whole head on the tail fits in your pan, probably safe to eat it. You know, sardines, herring tilapia, you know, even salmon, you know, you can get small salmon that will fit in your pan. And those are all great, healthy sources of protein and fish. And here we've got some catfish, which is interesting. And I, I don't know, actually know how to cook that, but some people love it. You've got tilapia and you've got shrimp. And shrimp are great. Shrimp are a wonderful source of protein. They're very low in, in um, any bad fats. You know, they, they have a little bit of saturated fat. People worry about that, but they're really very healthy for you. And, and they're very low in toxins. So I encourage you to you know, enjoy shrimp and scallops and small fish and just make that part of your diet. Well, and one note on those is you really want to try to get wild fish if you can. Again, not always possible, but better than farm raised, so. All right, Tana, well, we've survived our first hunting trip into the food desert of the average American supermarket. And we had fun. And we had fun and we found some, you know, dangerous things that could hurt us and, and we found some make great us sick. Things. And we found some fabulous things, right? So we learned about good fats and bad fats. We learned about good proteins and bad proteins. We learned about good oils and bad oils. So right. on the Daniel Plan website, danielplan.com, we're gonna provide resources for shopping lists, for recipes, for quick snack ideas, right. for grab and go ideas, for things that you can make in five minutes, 10 minutes, and also alternatives to things you commonly like that you really don't want to give up, but we'll give you alternatives to use. And so over the next six weeks and over the next 52 weeks and over your lifetime, you're going to learn a series of new skills. That's right. And we want to emphasize that we know that this is new to some of you and we've been there. So we want to make this as easy as possible. Some of you are ready to jump in completely and make that leap. And some of you are ready, just want to take baby steps. So we're going to give you alternatives that will make it easy for some of you to make that leap and it will make it easy for some of you to take baby steps. So that list will be available and we're just gonna make it as easy as possible for each of you to go at your own pace. So. That's right, you know, they say a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. So let's take that step together. Join the Daniel Plan, go to danielplan.com and come on this journey with us. That's right.